image classification is kind of buzzword. Now or then you must have heard of this particular term, maybe in a workshop, maybe in a conference, some presentation or something like this. And why not? Because it is so popular and its a key applications are so wide that you will wonder a lot. So today's focus is going to be image classification. We'll look at that of what it is, how to do it, what are the different sorts of things, what are the different related tasks, what are the different data sets, key papers, et cetera, et cetera. All the key related things. So let's start. Hey there, my name is Rohit Kumar, and today we are going to have a very specific focus on image classification. So coming to the basic intro, so it's a supervised learning algorithm problem and uh, where uh, it is defined as a set of target classes and uh, train a model to recognize them using the labeled example photos. Now, when we are jumping onto the actual implementation uh, and the related theory part, so I will recommend you to go through this particular work, uh, which is uh, named as the metamorphic testing of objective detection systems. This work uh, is uh, discussing the deep neural networks and uh, then it is showing the importance and how they can be rapidly process the pictures or the videos and recognize the objects uh, that they contain. Additionally, uh, they have highlighted some of the critical gaps in the works, in the existing works, and they introduced the design and realization of the meta OD, the first metamorphic testing system for object detectors. So in this way, they have synthesized the natural looking images by inserting extra object instances and they have designed the metamorphic conditions uh, predicting the results and the inserted objects. Uh, finally, the assertion on the equivalence of the object detection has also been discussed. So coming on to the specific detailing of uh, image classification, we'll jump on to this particular paper's so full form. So we are going to open the uh, PDF and before that, uh, let me tell you some of the related things to image classification. Image classification is also considered as the fundamental task to comprehend the entire image as a whole. Normally, many of the techniques work at pixel level, but uh, uh, a kind of normal when we say that image classification, then in mind it automatically comes that you are working at image level. So that's why some of the people do define as a fundamental task to comprehend an entire image, not a single pixel. Then the goal is to classify the image by assigning to a specific label. So it means you are labeling the different images that this image belongs to this particular class. Class means a label. Then that particular level will define the class. So the image classification in this way refers to images in which only one object appears and is analyzed specifically one by one. You are going to take the images and you are going to categorize them based on the labels. And uh, when we discuss the similar sort of concept, but in contrast, the object detection, it involves the classification and localization. So that's why we have the different sorts of scenes in different scenarios and the context. Now coming on to the specific benchmarking of the work, uh, there are a number of data sets and there are a number of models people have used and they have achieved the uh, sufficiently good level of accuracy. But uh, before discussing that, let's uh, discuss the paper that we have opened, this PDF form. So this work uh, is uh, at Arzai, they have uploaded it in December 2019 and uh, kind of recent work. And uh, there they have discussing the typical key image task solved by deep learning techniques. So this uh, figure one is discussing these things. Second one, a simplified fast RCNN workflow that they have been discussed. Now coming to the approach overview. So in this particular video, uh, we are going to discuss that uh, what are the related key benchmarking systems. So because whenever we are saying that uh, there is a concept of uh, object detection or the image classification, then obviously the benchmarks come into the picture because every work, not every work, even uh, there are so many works, not limited, but so many works are there and they are claiming that this level of accuracy, this level of performance we have achieved. So there need to be some sort of benchmarks and based on those benchmarks only, you can do the comparative analysis. So always go for the standard benchmarks and then based on those benchmarks, you can substantially show your output or the improvements that you have achieved. So in this work, when you when the, come down, then uh, the related case studies, including the recognition failures, the classification failures, localization failures, different sorts of specific failures that they have discussed. 
and uh, the specific object related things so the object insertion the refinement and uh, the extraction related things are also have been discussed coming to the implementation part so they have uh, discussed the object detectors and uh, the speed and the coco map have also been discussed finally coming on to the evaluation uh, overview the augmented diversity of synthetic images they have discussed with respect to the amazon recognition google auto ml vision and uh, the number of other things including uh, the result overview where they are discussing the processing time including the prediction time of object detection so obviously when you see these sort of papers there are hell lot of uh, details it means uh, if you go on go on go on lot of lot of details you will find out but ultimately what's the point the only point is that whenever you are going for the specific comparison always look on to the similar sort of metrics if one work that you are comparing with your work they should not have some different metrics they should have the similar sort of metrics as well as the data set that uh, they have considered that should have been similar then only the specific or the authentic comparison that you can perform now coming on to the libraries so number of libraries are available the pytorch image models are available and uh, the open mixups and the mm classifications are available number of papers are available on these different libraries and um, you can go move on to the github page there you can find the specific details of all these things coming to the data set details so the fashion nest then uh, cup 200 uh, no, 2011 then the places uh, stl 100 sorry stl 10 and uh, the nest imagenet and uh, celebe uh, are some of the popular data sets where the image classification has been used and uh, most of uh, these data sets we have also discussed in our uh, data set series so if you are interested in the research data set info then you can go to our uh, data set series there you will find the related information about most of the related or the highly recommended data sets coming on to the specific tasks so people have used a semi-supervised image classification they have used the fine-grained image classification they have used the out of uh, distribution detection and uh, some of the related things so for, uh, for example uh, the small data image detection then the sparse representation based classification artistic style classification etc etc a lot of classification types are available but uh, when we say that we are going for a specific type of implementation then there should be sufficient motivation behind because every time you do some work there should be one reason that why you are going for that particular classification only so for example you are having a base paper in that particular base paper some particular type of classification has been ignored due to which some of the critical components are not coming in their accurate form so then you can do some sort of classification then you can do some sort of related cloning or something like that uh, whatever you want to perform means uh, based on your specific um, uh, methodology you are going to contribute something but uh, that particular methodology should also highlight that why you are going in like uh, that particular way so that's uh, from my side and now coming to the specific uh, uh, implementation based papers there are some implementation based papers where the people have discussed uh, multiple different uh, techniques as well as the multiple different uh, aspects of uh, image classification so mobile nets is a popular work where the efficient convolution neural networks for mobile vision applications have been used. There are a number of uh, citations to this particular work and the people have used the TensorFlow for this particular work. Now coming on to the other important work, so the mobile net uh, V2 version 2, there the inverted residuals and linear bottlenecks have been discussed. So you can go there, it's a CVPR paper, very well-formed and very reputed work. Coming on to the other works, uh, including the ICCV, where they have the grad cam and the visual explanation from deep networks by the gradient based localization have been discussed. So multiple works are available. You just Google or uh, means uh, you just go to Google Scholar. There you find a lot of details, a lot of details. You need to just uh, filter the odd things out and just uh, specifically focus on to the things which are related to your particular domain or the specific interest. So that's all from my side. Hope you must have liked some of the details and uh, some of the details must have been useful for you in this particular video. If you didn't like it, please do comment below and criticize. I will definitely look into what could be done in the next videos for improving purposes. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.